Good evening everyone and welcome to the dog walk, the almost daily uncut unedited one take show where I take my dogs out for their late night walk and try to discuss as much as I can of what's been on my mind for that day after having talked a little bit about myself and because I tend to ramble on maybe 50% of the time I talk about 25% of what I wanted to say or I might have gotten those number backwards anyway it's one of those days um, speaking of which if you're not interested in knowing more about me I will get to the actual topic a little bit later on I'm going to try to start to put timestamps in my videos so you can skip ahead and speaking of which as a little bit of admin before I get started to talk about today's topic which will be very quick because it is freezing out it's minus 16 that's why uh, Daisy isn't with us today she took one step outside and went nope and headed right back into the house so it's just me starting me today plus I have been mentally exhausted and physically exhausted Felix has started teething so his sleep schedule is completely out of whack and that's taken a bit of a toll on me plus I'm going through some other stuff personally that has been keeping my mind occupied so yeah it's gonna be a short one especially with just Misa here um, one of the things that I wanted to or that I have been thinking about is I'm realizing that my videos are getting longer and longer and longer and I'm just not able to keep up. This is literally the only thing that I'm able to do. Even when Felix sleeps for like 10 minutes, I go downstairs and I edit and put in subtitles. And I just can't afford to only be doing this in every single spare moment that I have. So I've been thinking of perhaps reducing my uploads to 6 times per week instead of every single day. Which may allow me to catch up on subtitles and um, add some not production value to the video because I really truly believe that I want to stay uncut unedited raw I think that's more genuine than the scripted videos although don't get me wrong there's huge value to the scripted videos but I want to be able to add timestamps and cards uh, linking to other relevant videos that type of stuff so I'm seriously considering doing that. Anyway, today's topic, since I've been a bit exhausted, will be a little bit more, uh, let's say, less, less deep or less intense. And I want to talk about, I'll say violence in sports. That's not really the actual topic I want to talk about. Uh, more like unjustified unnecessary violence in sports and this is triggered by uh, my friend JF linking me uh, or telling me to look at a recent hit so today is February 13th 2024 I think the hit was about two days ago it was a Maple Leafs player Morgan Riley hitting a Sens player and what happened is it was, for those of you who know hockey, it's very typical when a game is close at the end of the game for the losing team to remove their goalie so they can uh, have six player, six skaters on the ice as opposed to just five plus one goalie. And sometimes, obviously, what happens is they lose the puck and the other team gets, gets it and goes to the empty net and scores and that sort of seals the game right so what happened in this particular case is that's well that's exactly what happened in this particular case and the senator's player got a breakaway with no one between him and the net and just slap shot the puck into the net to uh, ensure the win for his team now I will admit that's kind of bad form. There's no reason to slap shot 
the puck into the net and just shoot it in. No need to rub salt into the wound, right? That's already bad sportsmanship. But it's not as bad sportsmanship as what the Leafs players did, which is as the Sens player has his back turned after having just scored that goal, he came in from behind and on the side of the board, crossed, checked him directly to the back of the head, which is just so wrong on so many levels. Sure, he's trying to enforce, you know, the code, you don't do that, blah, blah, blah. But seriously, cross-checking a guy, if you, sorry, if you don't follow hockey, cross-checking is when you take your stick in between your two, well, you're always holding it in your two hands, but basically you take your stick and you hit the player with it. So imagine the horizontal stick hitting you in the back of the neck with full force at full speed from a guy skating that's probably around 200 pounds and all that momentum going directly into your unprotected net and slamming you into the boards. It's so, so freaking dangerous. People have been paralyzed or have had life altering injuries as a result of stunts that were even lesser than that. So I just think that I don't understand why in 2024 we still accept things like that. I understand hockey is a violent sport. It always has been. I mean, I grew up with hockey. I've seen all the players. Uh, how many hockey players still have all their teeth, right? <laughs> Not that many. And I did go through the 90s era and all that. So I've seen it be much worse with the enforcers and all that. But I think that we can't accept things like this anymore uh, if this is just one example the other reason why I wanted to talk about this is I was I watched a random YouTube short a day or two ago where a boxer knew he couldn't win so he started to hit his opponent behind the head behind the on the neck again same spot right huh curious and that is completely illegal in boxing too you know in a sport where your entire goal is to hit the other guy as much as possible and and knock him down that's something that's not allowed there's a reason for that in that short the boxer who got hit multiple times behind the head well he ended up being paralyzed and, and he's in a wheelchair now and he I'm not sure if he can speak, but basically his entire life is ruined because of this one idiot who was a sore loser and who went to those lengths to try to win his match. Now I know that there's always been cheating in sports and you always hear those stories about people loading their gloves and boxing and things like that. My god it's cold. But I guess my point, or my point of view, I should say, is imagine this is something that happened in the street. What do you think would happen to the, the guy who n takes a stick to the back of the neck of someone else in broad daylight in the middle of downtown of whichever is your biggest city in your country? and is witnessed by thousands of people doing this. What do you think would happen to that person? Because because it's a sport, all that this Mr. Riley, I'm not sure I should call him Mr. because he's anyway, uh, but all this Morgan Riley got is a five game suspension. So five days off. And then, you know, it's swept under the rug and everyone moves on. Meanwhile, in this case, I think the player was okay. But there are so many other examples. And if you want another good one, being a Habs fan, I'll have to mention 
just look up the Chara hit on Pacharetti. Uh, Chara, C H A R A, Pacharetti, P A C I O R E T T Y. Pacharetti, I think he broke his back and he wasn't able to play. He had to be in traction and rehab for three years, something like that. Just nuts, anyway. And those are that's just one other example. But we just accept things like that. Sure, everyone's all outraged and you know say, oh you shouldn't have done that and blah blah blah. But in fast forward a week or two and everyone's moved on. Oh crap rabbit right there. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, as I was just saying, if that had happened in broad daylight the guy would literally be in prison. He'd be in jail for, not just for assault, but probably even more than that. This is something that happened in front of thousands of thousands of spectators broadcast on live TV and in front of, you know, referees and all that stuff. And all we do is give them a little suspension and then we move on how how is that okay i get that when you sign up to be a hockey player or a boxer or whatever you do sign up to take on a certain amount of risk that's normal but there's a difference between the acceptable normal level of risk of the sport that you're practicing and something as egregious as that which is completely outside of the rules. And the NHL has been tightening rules, making it you know, like the, the, let's say the icing rule at that change, right? To avoid people getting slammed into the board at full speed at the end of the, of the ice. Uh, that was a, a positive change. Like we're, we're, there is, we're heading in the right direction, but I just don't understand how we can still accept something like that. Nista, come on, it's super cold. Let's go. Like my hand is literally frozen right now and it's been 10 minutes or 12 minutes. Anyway, I'm not really, I don't have a lot intelligent more to say about this topic except that I just think that this is a type of stuff that players should not be okay with that owners should not be okay with that fans should not be okay with like do you really is your bloodlust really that intense that you can't have enough of the large amount of fighting and hitting and everything else that's already going on in hockey that's quote unquote legal in the rules you have to you're willing to accept people doing stuff like that people possibly paralyzing your opponents or have you know may, doing stuff that's going to be life altering to them to their opponents and they just get away scot-free or well, i say scot-free because when you think about it a few game suspension okay it might hurt your team a little bit blah 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 but in the end if you're the kind of asshole pardon my french i shouldn't have said that word but if you're the kind of person who's willing to do something like that do you really think that a few game suspension is gonna prevent you from doing it again i think history has shown that it doesn't it won't and you'll keep doing it so maybe it's time to rethink it. and I get that you as a spectator might be happy to see that happen to someone from the other team who just beat yours or you might not want to see your star player be suspended but really at a certain point hockey is a game and I love hockey it's in my blood but it's a game and I don't think that we should accept elite 
athletes being put at this unnecessary risk with no consequence like sure you sign up to be a boxer you sign up to be a, a snowboarder you sign up to be a hockey player you sign up to accept a certain level of risk and if something happens well you signed up for it and that's why you make the million bucks right but i think that only applies when we're within the rules of the sport within what you actually signed up for the level of risk that you signed up for not we shouldn't accept things like this and i think it should go much much farther than just a few game suspension whether that is actual like just your career's over or even up to like criminal charges like the guy that uh, Sorry, I'm, get, I'm getting emotional and frustrated just thinking about it. I'm just trying to imagine, put yourself in the place of the poor unsuspecting player who's playing it by the rules and who suddenly gets, you know, you're a boxer and the first punch that your opponent lands on you breaks your jaw because he put bolts in his boxing gloves. Now, I know, I'm sure that's not a thing anymore. I'm just trying to illustrate. Right? This is not something that you sign up for. It's not something that's and if it were in any other context, in any other circumstance would go to jail or would at least have charges laid upon them right so maybe it's time for us to grow up and to stop accepting these hooligans just for the pleasure of the spectators maybe like, put yourself in the place of either that player who's being hit and who life is ruined or even who just loses you know six months of your life or now has to undergo ACL surgery or whatever it is because someone played dirty put yourself in the place of that person's kid or that person's mom or that person's wife just, just try to imagine it for a second and I know you can't because Unfortunately, since we're raising a generation, hey, I won't go down that part. Let's just say people are so individualistic that even if they try to have the empathy to put themselves in the place of the victim, they, they don't. They don't actually really think it through. So I guess all I'm trying to say is maybe it's time to grow up. Maybe it's time to become adults and to stop accepting things like that. Just trust me, if one or two guys get literally thrown in jail or get not just suspended for a few games, but uh, you know, like banned from playing ever again when they do stupid stuff like that, I think thing is that type of behavior would die down quite drastically. I also don't think that it'll ever go away because humans are emotional apes and we will always continue to act as such and people will always, nobody's perfect, people will make mistakes. But also it takes a certain type of environment and mentality and culture to even have that thought flash into your mind so I don't know am I being too am I showing my age here am I being a little bit too uh, how do I say conservative or like I maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong maybe it's okay for people to become paralyzed because someone didn't play by the rules but I just don't think it is anyway 
Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for listening to this shorter edition of the Dog Walk. Have a good evening.